uh, Benny, can I ask you one quick question? Who do you think will win in a fight, you or this big guy? Again, it's not about size. It's not about science. It's about leverage. Leverage. So you think you can take him? Yes. Let's put it this way. Yes. I can't be beaten. So there you go. You can't be beaten. I'm not arguing with this. <laughs> okay. Okay. He's right. Yeah. He or he's he, exactly right. He's definitely right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> What's going on? All you badasses. I thought I'd throw that funny clip in, make you guys laugh. I did. That was the second time I ran into Benny the Jet. Great guy. Uh, a real badass in real life. I thought I'd make you guys laugh, throw that in there. I was at Dragon Fest, and I ran into the legend there for the second awesome, time. Man. Great guy, great guy. Oh, what do you got there? What do you got there, Kyle? Uh, Benny the Jet. Ooh. Training and fighting book. Awesome, awesome. All right, let's get nice. into it. We got a badass huge panel today that's right the kung fu avengers have arrived that's right we got everybody here today on this episode the 16th episode of versus that's right wheels 16? on meals 16 wow. yeah wheels on meals versus dragons forever two jackie chan kung fu classics starring some of the same cast and and the, and the same villain at the end which we'll get into it and we're gonna have a lot of fun talking about these two classics this is a tough one for me because i love both of these movies uh but we're gonna do is we're gonna go around we'll talk about what we liked and what we didn't like about the about both films and then at the end we will vote that's right baby we're gonna vote on uh, which movie we think is the better of the two. But let's see who is here in chat. Movie Dojo Army showing up right now. We got Detective Bat, Fat, what's going on? John Hall, Heather Love, Jason Willard, Tyler, Gilbert. That's right, all the Movie Dojo Army sh slowly show showing up to hang out with us. But look at all these special guests we have here today. Look at all these badasses here. That's right, we're going to get into it before we... We got to get the introduction in here first now. We got the Kung Fu Santa. What's going on, Kung Fu Santa? That's right, Films of Fury. Get that new book. Represent. That's right. There you go. Oh. Oh, I, oh, I <laughs> nice. like it, right? That was yeah. the first time I met him in, in L.A. In nice. Rick Myers, baby, in the house. That's right, we got Eric... The Asian movie enthusiast hanging out with us today. That's right, baby. That's right. This guy knows his stuff. It. He knows it. his stuff, baby. We got filmmaker, martial artist, Kyle Wong in the house. Look out for Night Watch coming soon, baby. Oh, yeah. And, of course, you know, the master of remaster is here, Frank Jang. That's right. Representing. That's right. Keep an eye out for Time and Tide, baby. Gonna be released from Eureka soon. Nice. That's right. I, I am sponsored now. Frank already gave me the message. <laughs> I'm sponsored by Eureka, so it's it's all good. <laughs> and shout out to Bobby Samuels. who couldn't be here tonight, but make sure you guys check out his brand new movie, Made in Chinatown. Make sure you guys check that out. We wanted to show some love. And brand new to the channel, we got Will. That's right. From it's Hong me. Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. Will, Hi. welcome, my friend. <laughs> This thank you, thank you a, for having me. Yeah, I'm this is gonna yeah. be great. And we got F.J. DeSanto, baby. That's right, showrunner of the highly acclaimed popular Transformers: War for Cybertron with Optimus Prime. That's right. Make sure you guys watch that. Thank you, F.J. for hanging out with us today, Jackie Chan uh, fan. Thanks for having oh, me. Oh, and we got we got the genius in here. There's a genius in here. We got the kung fu genius. That's right, Wing Chun master Alex Richter. In the house. Thank you, thank you. That's right. Representing. <laughs> got to represent some kung fu genius. We got go. <laughs> and we got, it's been a while since he's been here, but we got Master Chaos back. That's right. Director, I'm, 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 uh, go ahead. You do the, do, do the director, spiel. Of, director of Blood Brothers, baby. That's right. He is back. What's going on, brother? Oh, man. I, I'm happy to be back. Uh, it's been a lot of stuff sort of happening on my channel. I've been very busy, but uh, I, uh, man, I missed it. I missed you guys, and uh, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm excited. I, I, I think I mentioned this off air, but I'm, I feel the least qualified, and I may not make any friends by the end of today's, uh, today's oh. show. But, um, You're picking Max Payne. I'm uh, picking Max Payne <laughs> and Iron Eagles over this. Um, but... Um, but I'm 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 stoked. I'm a big Jackie fan, um, and yeah. I'm I'm honestly just gonna sit back and like go to school. I want to listen to everybody's thoughts on these movies and and right. this legend that is Jackie Chan. So let's get into it, man. Let's go ahead and get into it. Wheels on Meals, baby. 1984 came out. Rick, take it away. Plot synopsis. Oh, Frank, take it away. Oh, I'm Frank, getting... Frank, Rep. take it away. Plot synopsis. All right. Okay. Since I wrote this plot synopsis at Tai Seng and it was and Erika used it, I'm just gonna read it. 
Look at that. Read it. Fast. So we have two fast food chefs, right? You've got Thomas starring Jackie Chan and David starring Yoon Bill find himself cooking up trouble when Detective Moby, played by Sam Hong, involves them in the case of a missing Harris. The three friends need all of their daring and physical dexterity when they find themselves facing a uh, triple helping of danger from the local uh, bad guys. There you go. Nice. Awesome. Very, Very well said. All right. What's the IMDb? What's the IMDb plot? <laughs> there's a lot of fights. Lots there's, of a cute, things. there's a cute girl and there's lots of fights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess I'll. I guess I'll start. How do you want to do this, Rick? I'm going to go around, and then we'll end with uh, Alex. And uh, we can end with Alex. It's you your show. That. It's your show. You do it. You yeah. figure. All right. It out. I'll just call out the name. Okay. All right, Pre Preston, you go. All right, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so, you know, unlike uh, Jet Li and Donnie Yen and all these other, uh, you know, martial art badasses, it, that, at the time in the 90s, it was kind of hard to find movies of theirs. And like I said before, you know, Lethal Weapon 4 was my introduction to Jet Li, you know what I mean? So I had to start somewhere out here in the States. Uh, but Jackie Chan was a little bit more popular, you know, around that time. So you can find... Jackie Chan, uh, you know, tapes here and there. A lot of the low way movies as well. Uh, Rumble in the Bronx was my first Jackie Chan movie in the theater, obviously, over here in the States. That's just how, yeah. it, that's just how it went over here. Uh, but I went to track down more of his movies, and luckily I went to the video store and I saw Wheels on Meals. And it's a very similar story with Dragons Forever. Both of them were there. And I, I watched, I was like, well, Wheels on Meals? What is that? So I rented it, took it home, started watching it. My dad was, I was in the living room. He was over here working. And doing some stuff, and he was kind of off and on watching, and I was having a blast watching uh, Jackie and Sam all do their thing, and you and Bu. And as soon as Benny the Jitter Kita showed up, my dad instantly dropped what he what he was doing, and he ran over and sat down. He's like, "I know that guy." I was like, "What do you mean you know that guy?" He's like, "I saw that guy fight on TV all the time." <laughs> He's like, "I saw his kickboxing matches." He's like, "Oh man!" And so we sat. He's he, from then on, he sat and watched the rest of the movie with me. Uh, but yeah, it's a fun film, fun little adventure flick out there. Got a little bit of European flavor to it. And it's just a lot of fun to watch. And the, the fighting is great. There's comedy. And it's, it has one of the best hands-down one-on-one fight sequences ever filmed in the history of martial arts cinema or kung fu cinema for Rick. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, yeah, it's, it's just, it was badass. I mean, when, when Benny the Jet did the roundhouse kick <laughs> and took out the flames of the candle, I jumped off the couch. I was like, what? What? Did that just happen? So it's amazing. I really, really, really like this movie a lot. And I'm not going to take up too much, too much of your time. We'll go ahead and we'll go to Kyle. We'll go that way. Positives and negatives okay. on Wheels on Meals. So definitely I did always see this when I was younger. And then it would always come up on TV randomly. And it always come up to the ma main fight between Benny and Jackie. And now that rewatching everything with the story and everything else... I'm really seeing everything of like how everything ties together and especially seeing Samo direct his brothers also, Jackie and Yen Bu. And then the comedy's there and then there's certain points. So I like how mm -hmm. the, the stunts are, are really well done. Like that wide shot where basically Jackie and Yen Bu drop kick those two bikers after these bikers scare off their customers. And then... Mostly, how all three of them have like a different fight scene where Jackie faces off against Benny the Jet. Um, Yen Bio faces off against I cannot place that name on who the other henchman was. Keith Fatali. Keith Fatali. Yeah. 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 There we go. Keith Fatali. I, now I, I'm gonna be shunned. <laughs> but um, and then basically, Sam Hong has a fencing match with the. I believe it's supposed to be the brother? Yeah, he has a fencing yeah, match with Yun Biao. It's very clearly Yun Biao. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? When, yeah. You see, when you watch the Blu-ray, it's like, oh, it's Yun Biao. There you go. Yeah. He's doing his thing. It's all good. And I think the only disadvantage of now, I think I realized, is Yen Biao is definitely simping over <laughs> Lola Forner throughout the whole film. Just simping on her. I'm like, seriously? You're just kind of... Gonna give her all your money and everything else like that? Wow. <laughs> just seriously? And even Jackie's like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And seeing the Richard Ng in there too, like 
being this crazy guy <laughs> as Sammo Hung tries to have this conversation with him. Those were like some good comedic elements of Sammo like <laughs> being comedic with one of his other other co-stars, which was from I think Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and Winners and Sinners, I believe. John yeah. Sean. But other than that, I I think that's my only disappointment is Yinbyo simping when he could be actually doing something more. <laughs> and it's not like there weren't other beautiful women in there. No. Know, there was other beautiful women walking around, but he just wanted her. It's all good, though. I get it. I get it. Frank, positives and negatives of Wheels on Meals. Let me get the only negative out of the way. I, I, the only negative for me for this film was that Samo's voice was not dubbed by the regular guy who did Samo. So, so that kind of took me out just a little bit, you know, because, you, you know, the same guy, you know, Lambo Chin, who always dubbed Samuel's voice, for some reason, he didn't dub him in this hmm. film. Yeah. So, but otherwise, other than that, I think this is a you know, fantastic film. I mean, you can you can feel how relaxed they were. You know, this was shot in Spain. So, uh, obviously, there weren't as much pressure on them, you know, from the stress or pressure from them, from, I guess, from local folks or from Golden Harvest, what have you. So you can tell they're having a good time, right? All three of them uh, love the chemistry together, love the humor. Um, like Kyle said, that, yeah, I mean, the, the thing with uh, Richard mm, telling them the difference between crazy and stupid, that got a big laugh at the audience when I saw it. Uh, once again, a great star here. And the fights, uh, the, you know, the fight's amazing. I, I like how they did it in a way so that you never once question why they could communicate with the local Spaniards. It's, it's like they all speak the same language, right? There's never any doubt that, oh yeah, you know, I, the Spaniards understand Cantonese and for some reason they could understand Spanish. But a lot of interesting, you know, action stuff in there, like the, you know, like the, um, the skateboarding, the fencing, you know, fencing that was pretty new for, you know, for Hong Kong audiences at that time. It's pretty refreshing to see a fencing fight in a Hong Kong film. So, so that was interesting. Uh, and then, of course, the fight with Benny the Jet. I, I really like the strategy played out with, with the fight between Jackie and Benny because Benny was, you know, he, he was cunning. You know, he, he would trick Jackie into believing he's, he's losing and then he would come back and, you know, kick his ass or, or hit him. So I thought that fight was probably one of the more, sm I mean, one of like the smarter fights that I've ever seen in that um, there's actually some, you know, scheming going on during the fight between the opponents to see how they can actually defeat one another. So, so that, I thought that was pretty good. But then overall, I just, you know, like I like the Barcelona, the, the, the Barcelona location. The film is very sunny, feels very happy, and, and, you know, and definitely one of their best work, best collaboration together. Frank, did the, the Jackie write this? Did he write the script? No, Jackie, no, okay. you almost never write a script. Oh, I believe okay. this was with Barry Wong, you know, one of Samuel's. Yeah. Uh, okay. Barry Wong was one of the regular collaborators with Samuel. So, yeah, so, it's yeah, a real Samuel movie, movie when you look at it. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. FJ, positives and negatives on Wheels on Meals. I, I don't have a lot of negatives about it because I think it, it's, if, if you take that era in context, it's a perfect, it's hard to follow up Frank, by the way, you know, it's like, fuck, you know, like I got to follow up this guy who knows sorry. everything. Um, sorry, sorry. But it's sort, of, it's sort of a great distillation of everything they're great at, at that particular moment in time and sort of what's come before it. Right. So it's sort of like a pinnacle and, and Frank's got a good point of how relaxed they come across in it. So the chemistry works a lot more than even say project a where they're playing characters. This just feels like, Hey, we're going to play the archetypes of each of us, of the, the public perception of each of the three of us. You know, they're like they're not really playing characters; they're just playing themselves, the best version of what the movie audience wants out of them, right? Look at that hair, and stylish. Jerry it takes advantage of that. I know that, that hair is amazing, and you know, I remember as a kid watching it and thinking the comedy dragged on a little bit, and as I got older, I appreciated it more because it takes a little bit of all the stuff that at that point's come before, like Winners and Sinners, it's got the comedy of that, you know, it's got the cameos and all that stuff. But then it just sort of builds to this fight, which is amazing. And everybody's going to talk about the fight, so I don't, I don't want to dwell on it too much. But what I loved about it was the international flavor of it. It sort of takes advantage of Barcelona and the location of the culture, the heiress plot, and, 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 and she's great. So, like, everything, like, there's something very fresh about it that holds up still. 
because it's sort of getting them out of Hong Kong allowed them to be, to just work to their strengths. So you've got, you know, like that Winners and Sinners style comedy where you have Richard Eng and, and John Shum show up. You, you, you're sort of satisfying that Hong Kong <laughs> audience at the time on multiple levels, you know, in a really significant way. But then you have the car chase, which is a very Jackie thing at that point in that era, you know, where the, you just showed it before the car going into this, which is a very Jackie thing that keeps going in other movies, like in, even into Armor of God, it's like a very similar stunt and all that stuff. It just, it seems like they all, it's the, I guess in summary, it's the best of the three brothers in that particular moment. Nice. Mm -hmm. Copy that. Yeah. All right, Will. My turn. Uh, the first thing I have to talk about is Jerry Curl Sammo Hung. <laughs> yeah. which is one of my favorite things ever. There he is. <laughs> and as soon as I, I, I rewatched this movie a bunch of times recently because my older kid became obsessed with it. And uh, every time he comes on the screen, I'm just happy. Like just looking at the Jerry Curls and the sunglasses and like the whole routine of him being the private detective and he throws the water on the paper thinking there's invisible ink, but there's nothing there. It's like the stupidity of everything that he's doing in that movie. He goes into the bar and he's like drinking everyone's wine and he's drunk by the time he leaves. And like, I just love that stuff. And I love like really silly comedy. And it, it just like ticks all the boxes for me. Um, and obviously the fight scenes are fantastic, and especially like the really short. There's that scene where they fight the uh, Keith Vitale and um, Benny the Jet on the street. Yeah, that's it right there. Um, yeah. They just kind of run into them, and they're like, "We can take these guys," and they're like, "Oh crap, never mind." <laughs> just take off and run away. And like, I just think it's a it's like almost a perfect movie to me. Um, if I had to pick anything about it that doesn't work, I mean, maybe some of the comedy, like everyone else has said, like you could say that the comedy routines go on like a bit, like when they're in the hospital. And you're with those tangential characters, like when they're fixing the wheel that comes off the car and stuff like that. But I think that stuff is really funny and very charming. And the personality of this movie, like I, there are a few movies that I can point to that have stronger personality than this movie. And I think that the personalities of all of them really come through on it. And it's just, there's so much joy in this movie and silliness. And they're not like, no one is taking anything seriously. And, um, because you know there's like prostitution in this movie and like murders and like it could have gone a very different way within the hands yeah. of different people um and the fact that they maintain the silliness of it i think is really um is really great it's one of the things i love about the movies they do together in general so i love this movie nice just let your soul go <laughs> just let it shine in soul glow all right chaos Oh, okay. Um, well, this is the first time watch uh, for me. I literally just got this this week. Uh, <laughs> and um, I was like, okay, great. Uh, what is the I'm name of the company, Chaos? What's the name of the company? Uh, Eureka. You might have heard of them. Uh, you might have heard of them, yeah. Um, it, yeah, um, they do great stuff. They do great stuff. Um, so I just got this, and I was excited to get it. I'm um, excited to watch it. Everyone talks about Wheels on Meals. Question number one, why the fuck is it called Wheels on Meals? <laughs> and not meals on wheels that always threw me off and someone's like oh you're gonna see wheels on meals i'm like idiot he said it wrong well i'm sure there's a reason uh, frank is yeah. there a reason do you know frank, uh, yes there's a reason uh, okay <clears throat> because the previous couple of golden harvest movies with english title that started with the letter <laughs> m all bombed and so <laughs> And so Raymond Chow and Leonard Ho said, you know what? Fuck it. The next movie, we're not gonna use we're not gonna have a movie, next movie, with with Jackie and Bill Samuel where the English title starts with an M. So since is you know, originally they're gonna call it Meals on Wheels. Said, and Raymond said, No, we're gonna stretch it. Call it Wheels on Meals. Wow. There's but there's also something else. That's the that's the Asian, the American one. Is there is a company, a charity called Wheels on Meals, mm -hmm. and they would have sued them. Ah. Oh, ah. yeah. Okay, well, now everything is clear. Um, <laughs> okay, well, let's talk. Uh, it it's almost makes the movie much more interesting now to me. Um, okay, let's talk uh, positives uh, real quick. Jerry Curl, uh, it's amazing. Um, I mean, every time I saw it, I just I was like, what the hell were they thinking? Like, he walked out on set, and they were like, yeah, let's go. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, uh, fantastic choice. Um, and then, yeah, the Benny the Jet fight at the end, honestly, I mean, it's really the only fight 
in the movie that has any kind of meat to it. I feel like every other fight is a punch and a kick, and then they run away or it's just kind of like a little a little scuffle. But there's no real, you know, knockdown drag out fight till that fight. It's a great scene, um, and uh, uh, I, I absolutely I think uh, Benny the Jet was the the first opponent that I've seen go up against Jackie that I'm like that Jackie's dead. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I, that guy's, that guy's, that, that's a, that's a tough mofo, you know? Uh, but, um, so that was great. I, I like that. I like that very much. Negatives. Um, okay. the plot, I mean, half the movie, I'm like, what is this about hookers? What's happening in this movie? I, I, I it's like, Oh, there's a guy who's paying Samo. He disappears for like an hour. Wait, what happened to Samo? Why are we, why are they making rice on the street? Oh, they've got a food cup. Okay. What's happening? I don't know. It was very unclear as to what the hell the plot of the movie was, and uh, honestly, there wasn't enough fighting for me. Like, like I said, I'm I'm first time watch. I didn't grow up with this movie. Uh, there was just I don't know. There was a lack of action, and and I'm not a big fan of Hong Kong comedy style. I like Winners and Sinners. I think that's a hilarious movie, but I can't stand the other Lucky Stars movies. Uh, I, I and I don't get the that. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm guessing it's a, a it must be c- funny culturally, but the whole desperate to touch a woman or be next to a woman <laughs> kind of thing. I don't know. It, it, it <clears throat> feels a little strange to me. I'm like, God, you guys are grown men. Are you acting like 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 teenagers? It just doesn't work for me. Um, <laughs> that was my that was my main problem with the movie. Okay. That it went off the rails story wise, um, and I, I just wish there was a little bit more action. That's. All right. That's Got my feelings on it. And now that I know why it's called uh, Wheels on Meals, um, <laughs> I, I feel like I've learned quite a bit about <laughs> about, about uh, Kung Fu history. It's fantastic. Nice. Alex? Yeah, so I hate to kind of, like, I'm the last one to go, so... No, Samuel you, you Hung, two I more. switched it up. I switched oh, it up. Oh, sorry, great, <laughs> yes. But Samuel <laughs> Hung's Jerry Curl is literally worth the price of admission in that. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I just recently saw an interview where he said he just did it because he says he kind of complained that Chinese people always kind of look the same and Westerners have lots of different looks. So he wanted to just do something different and kind of random, and God bless him for that because that's right. amazing. Um, yeah, and also... Props to anyone who does know all the lyrics to Soul Glow. That was absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Uh, very jealous about that. Uh, yes, yeah, obviously, as a Wing Chun instructor, that whole opening scene when they're on the wooden dummy and Yun Biu goes and does his thing and Jackie just goes up to it and just throws the one move. That's, that's Wing Chun comedy for me right there. I think that's absolutely fantastic. The fight scenes in this movie are unbelievable. The stunts are so varied. I mean, when you compare it to anything else from this time, but even really, quite frankly, since, I mean, you had fight scenes, you had skateboard stunts, you had motorcycle stunts, you had car stunts. And and when you think that this is in 84 and contrast that to what Shaw Brothers was doing in 1984. And it's like, this was whole nother level for that time period. But even since to, to, find movies where you really see this kind of action is very, very rare. Um, Benny, the Benny, the jet fight scene is unbelievable. I mean, what else can you say about that? Uh, I have nothing but strength. Yeah. The comedy can be a little dated. And if you don't understand a a lot about the Chinese humor, it can be a little off putting, but that's for me kind of a a, a cultural thing. I'm totally fine with it. My wife's from Hong Kong. I'm totally used to this stuff. Um, Maybe the one only gripe I have. So, Way back in the day, before I was the Kung Fu genius, I was the skateboarding genius. And uh, What a resume this guy are, has. The skateboarding <laughs> teams are amazing. And they actually did, both Jackie and uh, Yun Biu did a fair amount of what I consider the harder skateboard stunts. But for like the normal stuff, like when Jackie's just going through the crowd taking orders, that was a stunt double for the normal stuff. But he did like the harder stuff. And the reason I can tell is, Jackie Chan is regular footed and his stunt double was goofy footed. And I was like, that's kind of a newbie error for picking a stunt double for skateboard should have the same lead as you. But Jackie did the harder stunts, the handstands, a lot of the jumps, but then the easier stuff, they handed that over to a stunt double, which I thought was just kind of odd because he seemed, mm-hmm. they both were able to skateboard well enough to do that. But that's a minor, minor gripe on an otherwise fantastic classic film. It, I this and the next film we're going to talk about makes me wish that they had done just a few more films together because it's just it's like 
I want to see more of this kind of thing from that time period. And if you can call that a, a, a negative, then, you know, so be it. But the movie's <laughs> fantastic. Nice, nice. Eric. Yes. Yes. One thing I really liked near the beginning is how their food van is almost like a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> like all these things just flying out of it. I'm like, wow, that's that's pretty awesome high tech stuff. I want that van. I know. I kind of want that food food van. Um, the one thing I would say is I do think the opening half could have benefited from one extended fight. You know, kind mm -hmm. of master chaos for that. But I do like I do like the interaction. It's very playful. It's charming. Um, <laughs> You know, again, like uh, one of my favorite romantic comedies is is my sassy girl from South Korea. So I don't mind <laughs> the guy who uh, was pining for the girl in, in a film. I'm kind of used to that. Okay. But the action, hmm? the action really kicks up during that car chase, the van chase, which I really liked. And you get some good in camera car crashes and driving on display. I like the old lady who does the Knight Rider turbo boost over the two cars and then decides to stop, get out of the car, and then, you know, give them the business with her umbrella, and then she rides off. That was pretty good. It was product placement. I mean, right? I mean it, it, oh, it, yeah. They have a good car, and then she takes it out. Come on. <laughs> and then, the you know, the finale, Benny the Jet, you know, this is one of those fights where you, you could tell – the two characters and probably even the two actors are feeling each other out during that fight. You know, they're giving some jabs, some quick jabs, some quick kicks, just trying to figure out, you know, okay, what, uh, what's this trying to anticipate what their opponent's going to do, you know, strategies on how to take them down. And even at one point when Jackie's having some, some serious trouble with Benny, he actually, he says, listen, he's like, man, this guy's tough. I need to, I need to just relax. I need to treat this, like it's a sparring match, and he completely changes like his mentality in the fight, which I thought was pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, it's just the way they film it, and and the way that that they execute it, it feels organic and real, which I think is one of the reasons why it's so good. So yeah, this is a it's a really good flick. I enjoyed it. Nice, Kung Fu Santa. Yeah. A couple of additions to, to what you've already said. Uh, one of the reasons that the Shaw Brothers was not doing much in 1984 is that they were closing down their film units in 1984. So they weren't doing much of anything. They were doing television stuff, so they're not going to be doing a lot of stuff in any case. Uh, we'll get into why, after the next one, I'll get into why they didn't do more. There's a really, there's a really oh. distinct reason. Rick, I remember you saying to me after that second movie came out, like whatever that is, eighty-seven. I remember you saying like, "No, they're not. They're not. They're not doing that's it. That's it. Like that was it. Like I remember you. I mean, I distinctly yeah. remember you telling me that. Sorry. Yeah. No, don't apologize. Absolutely, anybody can cut in at any time. You know, that's the only way to stop me talking, anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> but in order to, uh, but we'll talk more about that when the time comes. But for this. I can set the stage, and rather than do it extemporaneously, I will read from the Book of Rick. Oh, <laughs> nice. oh. As if that wasn't enough, Jackie also co-starred with Yun Byo and Sammo Hung in several Sammo-directed kung fu comedies as payback for Hung's help on Project A. Winners and Sinners, 1983, and especially Wheels on Meals, 1984, added to Jackie's experience and reputation. Both featured great kung fu, although the latter showcased a classic, a climactic fight with real-life martial arts champ Benny the Jet, Urguidez, that was even more effective and realistic than Dragon Lord. This is a direct quote from the man himself. Quote, we filmed it for 48 hours straight, Benny told me. And Samo asked if I would take a punch on camera. After some thought, I agreed, <laughs> but told him you only get one shot at this. You can clearly see it in the finished film. That was a lot of work, but a lot of fun, and I think it shows. Samo concurred, remembering the collaboration with Betty and Jackie as very satisfying and rewarding. Now, the rumor is that that fight because they were running out of time 
at the end of production was shot in one 24 hour block. They, they did it. For, usually they'll, you know, just again, asking Jackie, you asked if Jackie wrote it. Jackie never really wrote anything the same way Buster Keaton never really wrote anything. He came up with it on the set. And so here they had a fight. They wanted to be master. They loved Benny. They loved Jackie. They wanted it to be fair and equal. So here we have two men at the height of their powers, figuring out ways that they would not give an inch. The other awesome thing about this fight is that while it was a fight, it was also very clearly a duel. No, somebody's not going to pull up a knife and try to stab. They're not going to try to stab each other or shoot each other. They're testing each other's skills. And that was so great about the end of the fight where Benny goes, come on, pull me up, pull me up. We'll go at it for another, for another round. Let's go another round. And then they, it slowly turned into, and then Jackie, and again, you're absolutely right, Fat Dragon, in that this wasn't just a martial art fight. It wasn't just a kung fu fight. It was both. Benny does martial arts. Jackie does kung fu. Therefore, they stayed in character. And that's why when Jackie's, Jackie learned, he learned as he continued to fight him to try to figure out how he's going to do it. And then he realized he was playing by specifically this shot, specifically by punching him. That's martial arts. That's not kung fu. And I'm sure Jackie, from his previous films, what does Jackie do almost every time he hits somebody with a closed fist in all his films? <laughs> exactly, Master. Yeah. Chris. He goes, ow. Mm -hmm. He knows that using <clears throat> it hurts. So that was the moment in the fight where he goes, I'm taking this way too seriously. I'm making a huge mistake. I'm fighting the way this guy is fighting. I'm trying to prove that I'm better than him by fighting the way he fights. That's stupid. I'm going Rick, to Rick, is that Samo or Jackie sort of figuring that like out? Jackie. In the Their relation, Samo and Jackie's relationship is, is, let's put it this way, interesting. And Samo, who was Jackie's big brother in the, in the Peking Opera School, never lets Jackie forget it. And Jackie, who was not well treated in that school because of, you know, the, his, his, his personality, kind of rankles. I mean, he is not even arguably far more successful in every imaginable cinematic way than Samo is. And he kind of, he doesn't, he doesn't push that in, in Samo's face, but just by existing, it's Samo takes it personally. Because, you know, he's at one point he even sort of mentioned to me that, you know, yeah, Jackie's always going to be more <clears throat> cuter than I am. He's better looking than I am. And I'm mm -hmm. sort of going. <laughs> and also, Jackie is far less self sabotaging than you are, Sam. Oh, so, you know. So, whenever you'll notice, Jackie on Samo's movies is different than Jackie and Jackie's movies. And Jackie and Jackie's movies isn't out to kill. You would never have the scene like you have where he shoots the guy, where Jackie shoots the guy in uh, Heart of the Dragon in a Jackie movie. But in a Samuel movie, Samuel wants him to defeat people. Samuel wants them to beat him up. And that will also rear its ugly head in Dragons Forever as well, where more complications occur. So, yeah, that's, I am certain given that this is the Jackie one-on-one -on -one fight scene, that Jackie and his boys, or Yun, would be working on that stuff. And Jackie sort of says, and I'm sure Samo was there sort of like going, yeah, he'll help, but he'll do it in Jackie style. Jackie has to win. That's, again, never in a Samo movie would Jackie suddenly go, I've got to relax. i got to treat this like, i got to treat this like, what is not exercise, like um, practice. Sparring. Yeah. Sparring. Yeah. It's weird how tonally different it really is from the rest of the movie, but weirdly, mm -hmm. I think because it's so good, it's consistent. You know, like you don't realize how much it really sticks out 
tonally, fight wise, when everything's been very, very goofy beforehand. Yeah. yeah. Right. This is a very realistic sequence. These are two people who respect and admire each other. And by the end of it, they could be friends if, you know, Benny wasn't going to jail. So but I remember, Rick, I remember when we talked about there's, there's an example of this in, in terms of a Jackie progression. This is why I asked. And I'm sorry, I'm yapping oh, away. No, but the, the, I remember a million years ago how Dragon Lord was, especially the climax in Dragon Lord, which is now when I sort of think about it, oddly similar in terms of its realism and sort of aggression in the fighting. That I remember you saying, post young master he was very much like how do i bring the realism to the fights and then i think you guys were i think i was watching your show when you're talking about project a where he hits the guy and there's too much you know dust and dirt dust. and all that shit right and like it feels like at this point they get to that point if you can track that arc of that progression of choreography etc it almost feels like that this fight in wheels on meals is that perfect concoction of what Jackie in particular is trying to attempt in the previous movies in those sort of like, what is it? Two years. God, it's only two years with all those fucking movies, but you know, two, three years of trying to get to that yeah. sense of realism. And I feel like they probably couldn't get it in the other movie in dragons forever, simply because a it's Hong Kong and you'll never top the first fucking movie. But the, um, you know, I think the, the circumstances that we've all talked about, of how this movie gets made allows for that to happen. And it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb in terms of its tone. Again, we'll get to that. There were other reasons for that happening in the next film. Oh, I can't wait now. Yeah. I'm very excited. Film, <laughs> it does. It's still considered and probably also by me, the best fight of its kind. Nothing else. Again, martial arts versus Kung Fu, each expert <clears throat> doing their own thing. Awesome. But it does, you're absolutely right, FJ, it throws off the formula. It throws off the mix. And basically, I, I, one of my, besides this fight, I love that they used one of the best actors, best American actors they've ever used in a Hong Kong film in this movie. And that's Herb Edelman. Yes. Herb Edelman yeah. plays Samuel's boss. Herb Edelman. Oh, yeah. Herb Edelman. I admire him enormously he did in his short career he died at, at the age of 62 which is like five years i mean i'm five years older than him when he died and he was in more than 130 movies and television shows. man he's an awesome and when i saw him in there i went thank heaven you guys are finally casting actors <laughs> yeah. that didn't last unfortunately yeah. Yeah. that was the one time yeah i was very happy that you know because after twinkle twinkle lucky stars where it was mostly fairly lame comedy frank you have to tell us i mean in in hong kong was something like twinkle twinkle lucky stars a huge laugh riot or are these guys, again, just doing adolescent nonsense? Well, you have to keep in mind, these films were made for summer, either summer or Chinese New Year. Right. So the idea, these are for family entertainment. So that's why you have all these comedy in it. You know, yeah, to, but to... I think it's stupid comedy, because I've seen other comedies, Hong Kong comedies, that make me really laugh. And that I think are legitimate. I mean, well, yeah. And the, yeah, I mean, yeah, but, but, but to Frank's point, they're making it for that for the adult event, the summer yeah. or the thing it's it's and frank tell me if i'm wrong it's intentional to appeal for that time period that audience in that moment right right it's for the kids who are still out of school about to go back to school because this was released in august of 84 so it's like end of summer you know kids are ready to go back to school in september so that's why sometimes you have all these juvenile humor but though but although i do appreciate some of the <clears throat> some of the humor in the film particularly that joke about John Shum telling his, you know, telling the joke and then not laughing at the punchline because he already heard that punchline so many times. I thought those are some, there's some clever humor in the film, you know, yeah. and, and I thought those are from very long. You know? It did struck me that they were just kind of slumming with the comedy. So I was happy to see in this movie that the comedy was a minimum. I mean, in the, in the, in Twinkle Twinkle, it, it takes up most of the film mm -hmm. and, Jack, and Jackie and Yun and Sam are basically supporting players. 
Here, yeah. Haki, Samuel, Yun, the major stars, those guys just have basically glorified cameos. So that made me feel better, but I still found the comedy less than inspired. But it didn't. The thing that bothered me the most was that because that fight between Benny and Jackie was so awesome, everyone else got short shrift, especially Yun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yun constantly has to cheat. He constantly has to use a weapon against Keith. And, you know, and I admire, I love Yun. I admire Yun enormously, but he is very, he's very, not, he's shy. He's definitely shy. I discovered that when I met him in person. But he is also humble. And so, you know, his, the attitude seems to be, and I don't know, I know about Samo and Jackie's relationship. I don't know a lot about Samo and Yun's relationship. And I'm not, again, just the way, the way Samo treats Jackie as a, a little brother, everybody treats Yun as the, the littlest brother. He had a nickname in the Seven Little Fortunes as whatever, the cute one or something. But they always lessened him. Mm. And he, he either was happy and comfortable with that or he didn't fight them on it. And here, but Rick, I think Rick, I think that's symbolic of Yoon's entire career. I agree. I think he was very happy on that yes. plane, and yeah. would occasionally like he what he directed like once or twice, and then he'll do like Peacock King or one of those crazy fucking movies back then. And but <laughs> I also think he's doing so much probably behind the scenes at that point with the choreography yeah. and the stunts. <laughs> you know, like he, you know, it, it's it's probably. And I have a, this is just my gut. I'm, you guys are the ones who know all this. I just feel like he's the one everybody likes and no one ever had a problem with. I'm talking about the other brother, like where he's in the middle of these two egos and they're right. probably all always bitching to him about the other one and all that shit. And he, he's always like, ah, whatever. And, you know, and just sort of is the even keeled cool one. And I think that's why he was so successful. But I also think at a certain point, he wasn't interested in being the leading man. He was. Just, he seemed very yeah. content where his career and his life was. And yes. what did, Frank, what did he do? He fucked off to Canada or something like that, right? And, right, and, right. He lives in Vancouver now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He immigrated yeah. to Vancouver a long time ago. So, so yeah, wow. he's, he said he has once said in an interview that he never really wanted to be a star. In fact, he turned down Samo several times to be the lead in Knockabout because he didn't oh, want wow. to. Wow. He didn't want to be the lead in Knockabout, and Samo convinced him to do it. He never really wanted that kind of that level of fame. Yeah, however, mm -hmm. I was going to say that Yun's, in the next movie, it's a completely different relationship Yun has in terms of the fighting. And mm -hmm. also things like Millionaire's Express. I mean... Well, yeah, and Eastern Condors. Eastern Condors. Yun is front and center, does some of the best kung fu ever put on film. But Even he's never the star. Arbor. You know what I mean? Like, he's yeah. always still... He's not carrying it, and I think that's what lets him shine. Yeah. You know, like, Eastern Condors still... Samo's movie, Millionaires, still Samo's movie, but Yoon gets to do all the cool shit that everybody remembers. You know, and I think exactly. that's his that's his niche and that's what makes yeah. him great. He always balances the other two out. Right. But not in this movie. Right. Although No, in the, thing, but in the next one, he's the best thing in the next movie. Yeah. We're, we'll get to the next we'll one. To that, I, yeah. agree. <laughs> right. I agree with you. Um, uh, but that but I will always love it for the Three Musketeers illusion at the end. The sword, <laughs> they do that move. I want that on a meme. I want that on a meme where they, you know, they, Chinese, China, what do they say in Chinese, Frank? They don't say Chinese. Do they say Chinese fire, to, fire drill in Chinese? What do, you, what do you mean? Well, they're, they're both shouting they're in the English dubbed version, which is one of the best English dubbed versions they do. When they're doing the sword stuff at the end, they right. do the techniques to defeat the villain. Right. And then the last one, they shout out Chinese fire drill. No, no, no. That wasn't what they said. Yeah. Okay. I'd be curious. They say, that's they, the dub. That's the English dub. Yeah, yes. that's the dub. Yeah, what they were saying was that we were invincible. That was the last line they said. Okay. Yeah, together, mm -hmm. we're invincible. That's what they said. Excellent. Nice, that's what I was nice. That was the, so the, the, the remember the Japanese dub. That was the one that circulated a lot at the time on VHS was the Japanese version, which had the English language track, and that's what you're thinking of because it, at the time that yeah. was so prevalent in the fan community in terms of what 
um, what we saw. I mean, I remember that was my intro to that movie. I don't think I saw that movie in its original language for like the first 10 years, you know, till whenever it came out on original DVD. There are certain I, weird movies like that. Heart of the Dragon, the Japanese version, which is a hundred times. Now you can get all this stuff on Blu-ray and, you know, then we'll cover it, you know, extensively and I'll remember everything from 30 years ago. <laughs> well, you know, I, I always loved the dubbing on this movie because it was the first one I had ever seen where the Asian actors had Asian accents. Prior to that, they all had English accents. Yeah. So I was going, good for you guys. Well, that's it as far as I'm concerned for me with Wheels on Me. All right. I uh, Sorry to interrupt, uh, uh, Preston. Quick question sure. uh, for uh, maybe Rick or Frank, if you guys can answer this. Uh, Samo, obviously he's directing. His hands are busy. You know, he's got a lot to do behind the scenes. But why in this one and and, in, and the next film as well? Why does he he always seems to take a back seat in the movie? Like his character is always like the fat idiot, or like the lazy guy, or the guy who's always messing up. Why well, I feel like you know why I don't know. He seems like he always puts himself in that box. I don't know if it's like a like psychological thing. I don't know. Do you guys have an answer to that? I do. Do you, Frank? No. I, well, I thought it was more of a screen persona. Although he's more like a leading man in the next film, though. You know, but, a romantic yeah. leading man well, next film. Again, well, everybody okay. gets twisted in some spin in the next yeah. movie. Yeah, right, right. But yeah, the again, the relationship between the brothers is very interesting, and you have to remember where Jackie was coming from when when this happened. He had just Samo had done him a favor, helping him finish Project A, and so he was doing these movies as a favor. And meanwhile, of course, and I say at the end of that segment, the one the one sentence I didn't read in my little reading from my book was, then Golden Harvest reared its ugly head. <laughs> Golden Harvest oh, basically... Then what is, does he do Protector after this? Yes. Oh. <laughs> but because he was going to do that, the instructions came down either, either subconsciously, consciously, or unconsciously, that Jackie's the star of this movie. And yeah. Samo, having his ego, sort of went, well, I'm a director, I'm directing this movie, and I'm not gonna fight this. I would rather just completely do my directing work, do the best directing I can, do the best choreography that I can. But then again, that's why the fights were in, in few and far between, because Samo yeah. was basically, <laughs> Samo was behind the, in the director's chair doing this. Mm. Have you ever seen film of him directing on this? Because they have some, as I recall, they have some wonderful making of sh uh, shorts and documentaries on, on this film. <clears throat> was just there, you know, doing his director job. Does he have the jerry curls while he's doing that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Of course he has to. <laughs> and the, the sunglasses. Yeah. yeah, jump in and out. In and out. <laughs> to give us they, also, they, also, they also cut a lot of the, so they also cut some really fairly lame comedy out of this. Oh, wow. So, yeah. All right. Wow. Copy that. Rick, you ready for uh, plot synopsis for Dragons yeah, Forever? Go. 1988. All right. Let's let go. me put, put this 1988. That's four years later. And remember, Jackie had his accident then. And the relationship had, I won't say, yeah, the relationship <laughs> got a little petrified. Things got. Things got a little tough, so they decided. Also, they had got all of them were at an age, especially Sambo, who's older than Jack, where they wanted to. If they're going to do a Three Dragons movie, they're going to do the greatest Three Dragons movie they can. And so that means everything is switched up. <clears throat> everything is a little bit more. Now let me let me do the. They also. If they were going to do comedy, they were going to do character comedy, not not silly comedy. So, and each of them, rather than playing goofy people, they play adults. And Jackie plays a corrupt lawyer. Samo plays a gun runner. Yun Biao plays a. Schizo. He's insane. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't going to use that term. I'm just but Plays, well, no, you're not just kidding. You're absolutely right. He plays a lunatic thief. So they're all 
far less oh by yeah the other thing i wanted to mention about wheels on meals is that it, it didn't do as well as they were expecting it to do in japan which hmm. was the brother's stronghold and so and neither did dragons forever so all three of these guys get run afoul jackie is hired by a polluter a uh, guy who has a factory which is polluting a fishery and the fishery is run by this lovely woman and her even lovelier younger daughter well, she has a daughter she has to be younger, right? she's a great actress great actress <laughs> <laughs> how, dare, how dare you you're, you're talking about the woman i love she has a lot of personality yeah she is she's got a great personality and so in their attempts to keep these these two young ladies from getting in Yun, Yun Wa as the polluter's way, they wind up falling in love and they wind up switching sides mm -hmm. and taking on the polluter. But meanwhile, I won't get to this when we talk about the movie. This movie was like a Jackie Chan dinner at his restaurant. Anybody who was anybody in Hong Kong that day, showed up on set, and Jackie and Samo and Yun said, "You want to fight?" And they all went, "Yeah." <laughs> and this was just like literally Hong Kong cinema's kung fu cinema's greatest hits. Nice. Carry all on. right. All right. So very similar to my experience with Wheels on Meals. Same thing. I rented Dragons Forever. It's like this time I sat my dad down and said, Ben, he's in it. He's like, all right, I'm watching the whole thing. Uh, uh, sat down, we watched it, had a blast, had a lot of fun. This, I seen this way years before I got around to seeing Prodigal Son. So this was kind of the movie that made me a Yoon Biao fan, or at least appreciate him more. Because, you know, as great and as fun as he was in Wheels on Meals, this is the Yoon Biao show, baby. This is his show in this movie, especially in the third act. He is amazing in this movie. I was like, holy shit. The stuff he was doing, I was like, dude, this is insane. Yeah, just huge. Became even more of a fan of him. And it's just, it's a classic, man. Uh, it's just the fights are great. The comedy's fun. The romantic stuff's there. You know, you know Samurai is with the romantic stuff. It's there. It's fine. <laughs> But it serves its purpose for the storyline, so it's perfectly fine. Uh, but yeah, yeah, more more meat with the fights, more yeah. satisfaction uh, in that area for me than the other film. Uh, but overall, love it, really enjoyed it, and uh, we're going to swing it to Kyle. Let's see here. This. Oh, one. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One more thing. Hold on. I'm getting that, I'm getting this out of the way first. Uh, just want to give a shout out to uh, Yuan Wa. He is a treasure. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> he is a treasure. Amazing. Okay. Any villain. Anytime so he's good. playing. Anytime he's playing a villain, especially in Eastern Condors. Yeah. Just a quick shout yes. out uh, to to Yuan Wa there. Bro. All right, ahead, ever. <laughs> I was gonna say you stole you stole it from me, but not Sorry, okay, it's, like, it's yeah. so <laughs> like honestly, Yunwa being the villain like that in a suit and smoking a cigar, and he just slides down the the banister yeah. like that. I'm like, I, I don't want to fight this guy. I I, I just want <laughs> I'll just be like, okay, what what do you need? What do you want me to do to surrender? <laughs> but um, this the storyline here is pretty much more direct because how. Jackie gets Samo and Yun Biao to like scheme with the two women and just the interaction that they have where um, Yun Biao gets arrested for, for uh, going into uh, the, the Jackie's love interest um, place and then they all fight each other later on when he's on a date in his house and it's the comedy is just exactly like that and it reminds me of like Uta, now Uta. Yeah, it reminds me of like how the how Peaky Blinders probably took that idea of like, don't fight, don't fight, don't fight. Walks away. No fucking fight. <laughs> and goes back to his thing. That's why I'm thinking that probably Peaky Blinders probably took that took that in that uh, idea. Probably um, the. I can't believe Dick weighs in this again, and both Yen. <laughs> Yen Biao and Dick Way going at it. I'm like, 
we get Dick Way and Yunbyo fight again, but this time against each other one on one. And I'm like, there should have been more. There should have been more because yes. you see Yunbyo go against Benny the Jet for a few seconds and then <laughs> back kick down. Are you talking about are you talking about Billy? Billy Chow. Yeah, is that what you're talking Chow. about? Yeah, that was Billy Chow. Oh, I meant that was Billy Chow. Ah, crap. That's fine. That's okay. Damn it. But yeah, great fight. That's what we're here yeah. for. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dick Way was on the ship, or he was early, he was in the yeah. fight scene earlier, right? Yeah, he was in the boat. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. Dick Way but sounds yeah. like a porn name. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. when Benny the Jet like kicks uh, Yen Byu right down, and <laughs> Yen Byu's just like right up, and he's like falls <laughs> back down. I was like, yes. <laughs> he says, "How can you fight this?" Even when um, Samuel Hong got a few seconds of fight. Exactly, fight yes. um, Benny the Jet, but then gets taken out and then drugged throughout the whole thing. I'm like, okay, Jackie's gonna pick up the slack now. And just how Benny the Jet just right before his intimidating no notions of just like cocaine. <laughs> All right, let's do this. <laughs> just immediately cocaine. All right, now let's go. And just I want to be one of these guys that holds Samo and flies back. <laughs> <laughs> I want, just give me five dollars. I want to be five dollars. That's and probably what you got paid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's honestly Benny's like powerful kick. And all I can say is the fight between Benny and Jackie here. This is that fight alone. We I have to segue into this. I was asked with my old team by a stunt coordinator to try and emulate that fight scene alone. <laughs> In three days. Oh my three goodness. days. And as he put it, like the joke was no, it wasn't even a joke. The bet was we had to finish it by this deadline, or we owe that stunt coordinator a case of beer every time. And and we do it by that date. <laughs> and I asked him, How was it? And he said, All bad. All bad. I was like, <laughs> you didn't say why. And I was just like, but I kind of understood from that standpoint of like how much hard work every fight scene got was put in especially for only the three days that we took to film it but literally the three weeks we took to prep and get ready because we actually used our whole team to actually put the whole fight together like okay i'm tagging out you i'm tagging so we actually established like okay i get kicked out you you go in next right yeah okay okay you next yeah go in. so it was oh, literally understanding all that but i think I appreciate this film more just for having a solid storyline, even though it was the last time you'll ever see all three of them all together. All that, right. We didn't know that at that time, though, remember? You didn't yeah. know that at the time. What? Rick knew. Right. Rick knew. <laughs> Rick, knew. <laughs> Rick knows. Ammo <laughs> knew. <laughs> right. Copy that. Uh, Frank? Okay. So, you know, again, I saw this movie in Great Starfield in China, just like Wusan Moose. And I and I really remember how in the beginning the the entire audience were kind of shocked at the kind of attitude the film was displaying. You know, you have Jackie as a womanizer slapping slapping women. Remember the opening scene the fight, you know, slapping that girl back. So people were kind of shocked, you know, to see that side of Jackie. And then of course we saw Samo as a gun dealer. Uh, and then you view as this kind of slightly, you know, mental thief. So that kind of threw things off a little bit for me initially at that time. But then as the film progresses, I, I begin to appreciate it. I, I like how different this was. I like the fact that they're showing you guys think they're always going to be like, like your, you know, uh, happy go lucky. Um, you know, uh, next door neighbory or nice boy. No, I'm going to show you the nastiest side, and I'm going to show. How, you know how how nasty they can get, but yet there's this story that supported their attitude, and and gave them all these chances to fight each other, like here in the parking lot, yeah. in Jackie's home. I mean, so as the film progresses, I began to appreciate it a little bit more, and also like how they created all the different situations for them to fight together, pick it together. I mean that 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 scene in the bar where they're drinking the milk, and then they were just talking, talking shit at each other. That that was great. You know, that, that's great writing. <laughs> That you know, and and it's almost like this is like their way of venting all these frustration they've been having from making all these films. But I mean, it, but without the fight, you cannot really support that theory. You know, we can 
you know, you really can't justify this kind of storytelling and, and this kind of characterization. And of course, the fight really redeem everything. I mean, the fight really make this film all worth it. You know, uh, they're evenly spaced. They're all good. And then, you know, from 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 the you know, from even like when Jackie is fighting all these guys in the in the, in the yard, that th that's great. You know, the way he used the prop, the way he jump around, everything was like really cleverly choreographed, and the complexity of them. Um, and to see all these guys that you have Zhong Fa, you have uh, Feng Ha On, you have Lao Ga Wang, you, you have all these everybody, you know, like who's like, like who's who at the time in terms of doing all these martial arts choreography stunts. So it's just refreshing to see all of them there. And then we get to the final fight, which is you know of course pretty amazing. Um, it, I mean, I, I there was some disappointment for me. I thought Yun Wah should have been better used. Um, I thought that they could have had an uh, almost like a reunion fight between Yun Wah and Sam or even Yun Bill at the end, you know, like like from Eastern Condor. But then they that went with great. this. Yeah, that would have been great. Oh, but they man. went with the storyline of Sam drugging him and then him losing, and then also some little sparring between uh, Benny the Jet and Yun Bill would have been good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and I didn't really like the abrupt ending. I thought the ending is just like, just yeah. that's it. Yeah, that that really threw me off. Um, I thought, why, why, you know, why not have a? I mean, did did they run out of time or what? It's like, how can you not just have one minute extra of resolving everything between the three of them? Yet you saw them kind of splitting, splitting up at the end, you know. And and that to me was, you know, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Rick was going to talk about that. <laughs> so that to me was rather unsatisfying. You know, not. I mean, I wasn't satisfied with that ending. But other than that, I think the fight really. Took on a whole new level, even compared with the you know the fight you saw in Wu Zhong Mills. And and I think um, uh, I think Master Chaos mentioned there weren't enough fights in Wu Zhong Mills before the castle, which I sort of agree. You saw a lot of stunts, your know, brief snippets of fight, but where here the fights are evenly laid out yep. and all interesting. I, that extended sequence at Jackie Chan's home is a nice combination of comedy, screwball comedy, and and some real good choreography. So mm -hmm. so yeah, definitely. I mean, despite all the flaws, I think this is. I mean, if they have to go out with bang, this would have been a nice, nice, you know, finale. Bang. To the, yeah. <laughs> All right. Mr. DeSanto. It's, again, Frank saying a lot of what how I feel about the movie. I, I love this movie. And I, I, I actually think it's a better movie than Wheels on Meals in terms of storytelling, you know, and you know, coming from where I came from, which was watching at the Music Palace in New York in that era, is I don't have the context Frank does of, you know, how a Hong Kong audience is going to react to them playing against type. I agree when he slaps the girl in the beginning. I thought that was very jarring. But I also took it as, you know, they, hey, they're, they're actually acting. Like where we're talking about Wheels on Meals, it's just them being them. This is like, oh, this is really interesting. And every time, like especially the Yoon introduction, I howl laughing. I think the laughs are better in this. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think it's a con it's a much more consistent movie. It, it the the reason why it's not as memorable is because, like I said before, it has to live up to the fight between the two of them in the other movie. Is just so otherworldly, yeah. and this so the pr the problem is this is an absolute like, you know, nine out of ten in Dragons Forever their fight, but the problem is their wheels on meals fight is a twenty out of ten. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and it's a game changer. In terms of the thing, um, mm -hmm. but I think there's an inherent charm to this movie at, in their sort of redemptive arcs, you know, especially with the the relationship with the women and stuff like that. You know, I, I think it, it's almost like they get to the archetypes of Jackie and Samo in particular. Like Yoon's playing, you know, it, it's actually Yoon's best acting for me because he's just hilarious and consistent and charming. But I think it, it's weird. It's almost like Jackie and Samo get to Jackie and Samo. When I say get to where they are, they're, they're classic screen personas by the time the movie's over. Um, and, and to Frank's point, the movie's consistent where it delivers just enough action as you go, um, you know, and actually pays off. And while it doesn't have huge set pieces, you know, of cars and jumping, because that wouldn't work with the tone of this movie, that boat sequence in the middle is what Rick was saying earlier. Like, this is a Jackie movie. Like, it's very clearly a Jackie movie, even though the other two are in it. It's like, 
we're going to have those moments. It's almost like, what are the lessons we learned on this other one? It's like, well, we got to have these Jackie do these things. And he's trying to woo the girl and he's sincere. And the, you know, and, and there's also the great, like the assistant who's in love with Jackie and all this stuff. Like there's just all this fun stuff. And, and I may be talking out of school, but the scene where I'm sorry, Rick, I'm about to throw you into the bus, but the, the, I remember, and I'm talking like I saw this thing as a teenager, and you know, and then I'd see him, and he'd tell me all the behind the scenes shit. Um, but the scene where he's walking in the beginning, and the assistant's following him, and he's asking every girl out, was going. Rick's like, oh, that that's just a take on who Jackie is in real life. Wow! <laughs> like I remember Rick sort of going like, yeah, that was like them making fun of Jackie because he had a, you know, he loved the ladies and all that shit. Like, and so it's a, I always look at it under that lens of, you know, like it's a wink nod to the to the thing. But uh, yeah, I just I think, I you know, we're gonna get to the end where we vote on things, and and, the, and the, my camera might accidentally turn off because I don't want to choose. But the, <laughs> but there's something. You and Frank I, I have a real sweet spot. I have a real sweet spot for the Jackie movies that are not perfect or not as you know, like Project A and all that shit. Like I, I'm an armor of God guy, and and Dragons Forever <clears throat> fits in that. And I love the camaraderie. This is the last thing: the camaraderie between the three of them, and especially as Frank points out, the scene in the bar. This movie takes advantage of their natural chemistry, the three of them. And sort of lets it, like it almost feels, especially like that fight you were just showing before where they're outside the house after they've been exposed and they're sort of blaming each other. Like that almost feels a little authentic to their relationships. And so there's something, nat yeah, this part, there's, there's something natural about this that I think the other movie doesn't have where it the other movie just sort of breezes by and they're caught up in this mystery. This feels like, there there's some there's some therapy going on here that that we the 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 audience doesn't quite know about until 30 40 years later we watch it sorry that was my whole thing copy that also well also want to quickly mention <clears throat> i think uh -oh. Dina Yip as the as the lady of the fish you know, the 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 fish plant i think she was also one of the best thing about the movie because you know, she's such a great character, fantastic actress. I think had she not be in this film, I think the the treatment of the lady yeah. in this film would have been much weaker. Mm. Yeah, right. Well, that's a good point. Uh, I want to know where I can buy the gigantic uh, light switch uh, that you have. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. So th Will. that was that was somebody's. In my Am I right? Because this just came out on Blu-ray recently. Do I remember right? Will Will seen this more recently than I have. Wasn't that apartment like someone's real apartment oh. that they found? Like I it was like someone's know. real. I feel like in one of the behind the scenes things, somebody was like, "Yeah, that was a real apartment we found." Like, and we just used it. I could be totally wrong about that. Like, I don't think they built that. I don't think that was a set. Oh wow! Huh. I have to revisit. I have. Well, I've got the. As everyone is showing off, but I actually like this diminished version that's just Dragon Forever. Can you see that? There's only one of them in this version. Is that the one yeah. I gave you? <laughs> oh. It is, yeah. <laughs> is, that the, is that the universe, uh, universal version? Universal DVD? It version? is, yeah. I don't know if you can see that yeah. on my camera. Okay. Frank's all pissed off. Like, those are the rivals. How, did, how, did, how do you... No, that? no, no, no. No, no. what Ooh. happened was I offered them my Tyson subtitle for them to use. And so Universe used like nine out of my ten subtitles, and then but they didn't use mine for Dragon Forever, and I was kind of pissed off at that time. Well, then fuck that. I'm not watching that. But who, yeah, but you got, who, who got the last laugh? Yeah, Frank has the last laugh. I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it my turn? It is. Right? Yes. Yes. Uh, I, there's there's so many great things about this movie. I, the music <clears throat> in this movie I love. It's so 80s and like synthesizer based, and especially during the fight scenes, you get this like really sinister like 80s action movie like pulsing like dun, 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 that kind of music, which I think is really cool. Um, and <clears throat> fights, I mean, as everyone has said, the fight scenes, the scene on the boat, the scene in the bar, the opening uh, bit where Jackie's at the restaurant with the woman, and I mean the stuff that Yoon Byu does on the the banisters, the railings or whatever at oh, the yeah. end. It's just yeah. insane. Like the acrobatic stuff that he's doing and like walking on the uh, the beams and then flipping over the, the banister or whatever the, the railings, I guess they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that stuff is incredible. Um, and I like the cast is really, really strong in this movie. 
Um, and the, the chemistry between them, again, as everyone has said, is really strong. Uh, if, I mean, if I'm going to criticize this movie, there there's an element to it where I feel like they're trying too hard. Uh, it, it almost like they're, it's like they're looking at everything that's happening in the eighties with like the high powered lawyer and the drugs. And like, it's like everything you would put in an eighties movie, put into one movie and like the corny romance and like the gun runner and all like, I see this in police story too, as well, where it's almost like this reaction to the darkness of American action thrillers of the late eighties, like lethal weapon and that kind of stuff. And they're, instead of being their normal corny, goofy selves, they're trying to incorporate the sinister element or like the kind of this darkness and violence that it almost, it feels like it's multiple things coexisting and they're trying to cram them together and it's not quite working. Um, like when you have the, the comedy and the kind of the camaraderie, like the three stooges influence in the, like the sequence where they're fighting outside the apartment and the bit where they're in the apartment and they got the guys hidden in the bedroom and like the silliness of that contrasted with kind of some like you know like jackie's defending a rapist at the beginning right and you had this whole thing where he's like oh well i'm gonna punch him so you see i don't really want to help a rapist get off but it's kind of like they're trying to be kind of dark and adult and play into and i mean this was after john woo too right so you're like movies like city on fire are coming out and they're like oh well, we got to be a little more edgy because look at this shit and like we have to compete with it and that to me takes away from the inherent charm of their movies in general copy that are you done? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, mean, I, I can talking, right. but I don't, I don't know. Are you I don't, done? Right. Are you Copy done? <laughs> Chaos. Chaos. Um, well, um, yeah, uh, I'm pretty much piggybacking on what everybody has said. It's um, it, it, it's almost like they, they, they went back and they thought about uh, Wheels on Meals and said, well, okay, well, what did we do wrong? What can we do better? And they realized, well, we should probably have a plot. That's you know, we, we we should probably you know spice up the fights a little bit more, um, and and we get that. I mean, the, the, yeah, there's fights throughout. And look, I'm simple when it comes to uh, kung fu films in general, or action movies in general. I want to be impressed. And I in Wheels on Meals, there was nothing really impressive until the end. I think the the most impressive thing was Jaggy trying to climb up that wall and he uses the the poles. Uh, that's amazing. That's crazy. Uh, I don't even know how he's a human being. That's that's insane. <laughs> but uh, this movie has impressive stuff all throughout, and they all get to do impressive stuff. Like, yeah, the they, right. Um, Will absolutely correct that at the end. The stuff with the railing and, and and Yun jumping around like a monkey. Like, how's this guy not breaking his head every second? I mean, there's no way that nobody broke a neck making this movie. It's insane to me. But it it, it impressed me. Uh, that's the the well, like, yeah, well, that guy probably got fucked. But uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, I hope this guy got paid extra. I mm. probably he, he mm, got ten dollars. Mm, mm. No, uh, so it impressed me. I mean, simple as that. It's an impressive movie. I I I I think they work better as a team in this one, even though they're sort of all on their own sort of side quests. They it gels together better. Um, they uh, uh, they they their chemistry is better in this one. I still you know Samo still kind of like you know sort of in the shadows a little bit. And then at the end, you know, everyone gets to do impressive fights, and and Samuel gets hooked on heroin. Like I, it was, it was like it was a weird choice. It's like okay, so uh, let's choreograph the fights. Okay, Jackie, you'll do this. Uh, Yun, you'll do this. Uh, Samuel, how about we give you heroin? Great. Okay, now we're ready to go. You know, if it was a weird choice, uh, and I and again, maybe Rick knows or, or Frank knows if that was a, he decided like I don't I don't even want to be a part of this. Oh, that's that's awful to hear. But uh, we're gonna hear more in a minute. But. Overall, I like the movie a lot. Uh, the first time I watched it, to be honest, I was a little put off by it. But then watching the special features and digging into uh, this wonderful release. Well, this is 88 films, so they're good too. But they're not, not as good as Eureka, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, just did a, I just did an audio commentary for 88 films. So. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, Forbidden City Cop. Yeah. Well, oh, well, oh right. Nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I think it, letting it sit in my head fit a little better um but there are a lot of weird elements to this movie you know uh the heroin thing the 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 rape angle the but i love the bad guy i love that wormy dude i don't know his name um with the glasses <laughs> and the, and the yeah. Yeah. amazing amazing he's so good he really makes the picture and it's just a much more fun full of life movie and uh yeah that's that's all i gotta say i'm i'm, I'm a all big right. fan of this one i also think the, sorry I, yeah go ahead will well, the heroine is he's probably trying to one up the Jerry curls. 
<laughs> yes. There you go. How, how can I go further than Jerry curls? I don't know if he Heroin. succeeded though. <laughs> Hard drugs. <laughs> I'll do the whole uh, movie on heroin. It'll be great. <laughs> I also forgot to mention the fact that Lee Ga Ding was in this film. Lee Ga Ding, of course, you know, famous martial arts choreographer and stuntman who worked with Bruce Lee. So it was just great to see him in this film fighting Samuel and Yun Bill. So I mean, that was that was absolutely fantastic. Wow. That's cool. Oh yeah, Alex. Yeah, so, I mean, I think Dragons Forever is definitely the more polished version of the two films. It's It, it, it made up for a lot of, like, deficiencies that Wheels on Meals had. If that was, like, their first attempt, Dragons Forever was definitely a much, much more polished and solid film all in all. Um, like Frank said, fight scenes are evenly spaced out. You don't have, like, the big car chase again, but there is that boat scene in the middle, which is amazing, and you have every stuntman, like, like – uh, like Rick said, you had everyone who could be in the movie. You know, Roy Chow uh, is the judge in the movie. At the very beginning, you have James Tien, and you just go, oh, man, poor James Tien. What, what would his career been like had someone named Bruce Lee not showed up? On the <laughs> <laughs> um, there he is in Prodigal Son, and that one scene, a one-armed man gets his ass kicked, and then, oh, come back later, and there he is getting killed in the opening scene of Dragons Forever. You're like, ah. Oh. His career has never rebounded from <laughs> from not being the star of Fist of Fury, right? Uh, and I, I, again, we can complain a little bit about Yun Hua being underutilized in the end because of just how awesome he is in Eastern Condors. But when you think about it, there were so many people in this movie. If you gave Yun Hua more airtime, well, you would have had to have taken away from something else. And there wasn't really anything as far as the fights go or their choices, that wasn't awesome in my opinion. So you would have had something better with Yun Hua, but less with Benny the Jet. And I think sometimes it, this film gets a little bit of an unfair comparison because the Benny fight in Meals on Meals is so over the top awesome. But when you look at that end fight scene with the stunts and Yun, Yun Biu on the railings, and you just look and you go like, man, a whole movie with his with this character would have been amazing. Just him flipping over stuff, and the, the <laughs> fact that he got to act in that movie and play a role where you know he's slightly mentally disturbed. But you know, even the scene when he wants to break in, when he goes onto the roof, and you just see how good he is and how slick he is. Uh, you know, he, again, uh, of all the brothers, he's him and Yun Wah are probably the most physically talented, but maybe because of their looks or being in the shadow of the two other brothers, they never really quite got the chance to stand out. I mean, Yun Wah for me, it's like, what's his resume? Oh, he was Bruce Lee's stunt double. That's like enough right there. You can put that on a card and that's all you ever need to say, right? Uh, again, I, I don't have really many complaints. This is, in my opinion, one of the most rewatchable of the movies, especially with the three of them. I, I usually watch this at least two times a year and uh, I, I love it. I, I never get tired of it. So, um, yeah, really not a whole lot to add. I think I think the movie is absolutely fantastic. And, and if people are a little put off by Wheels on Meals, then I think this, this is the one they should see if you want to see the best of the three of them together. Copy that. Well said. Eric? Yeah, yeah I agree with a lot of uh, what's been said already. Um, near, near the beginning of the film, we get a few just classic showcases of 1980s cell phones, which I always enjoy. I love those freaking things. You could probably, I want to use, I want to see some of those used in like fight scenes because they were hurt. Um, I, I like the comedy in this one. You know, I do like that lengthy scene where they're in the apartment. I, I, I found it to be very charming and and actually quite i just think the humor works a little better in this one i do think the the samo romance scenes were maybe a little bit flat but uh yeah it's, it's not that big of a deal i do like how the action again spaced out like everyone said that's 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 very important for me and once billy chow showed up in that barbara i'm like oh baby here we go i, I like that dude he's been in some real classic movies you know fist of legend uh, Master of Tai Chi TV series, Robo Tricks, is, you know, some real classic films. So high risk, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in that bar fight, there's a few really cool scenes that stood out to me or moves. I think Samo, I don't know the proper term, but it almost looked like a WWF suplex that he does on the hand railing. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. And then uh, the boat scene was really cool. 
the standout move on that one for me was when Jackie was on the ladder on the outside and did like flips his legs out and still hangs onto the ladder and knocks a dude. That was pretty sweet. In the finale, one thing I never noticed before, there's some sweet camera work in terms mm -hmm. of when uh, Yun Byu is about to fight Billy Chow. Billy Chow is in an office. The window, or uh, yeah, the window was either yeah. broken or open. Yeah. And you see question. Billy Chow oh. in the, in, oh, and yeah. then all of a sudden, Yun Byu like moves off camera, and you could see his reflection like right next to him. Yeah. And then it yeah. moves over, and they fight. I thought that was really, really cool. Uh, Yun jumps through uh, one of the windows with sharded glass, like around the edges. Yeah. And uh, I'm not that familiar with candy glass, but he could have gotten cut doing that, right? I would assume. Yeah. So I thought that was well, pretty you cool. Know, they used to have special glass made. I learned this from Rick a million years ago. Double the candy, double the size candy glass, so they could uh, get hurt. Oh, but wow. they didn't want it to look cheap. What was it? Was police story? Was police story where that started? Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then and so anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but. That no. whole thing. Yeah. You know, on Hong Kong films, nobody ever gets hurt. <laughs> <laughs> What's a union? About it. Nobody What's gets hurt. Uh. <clears throat> yeah, all I know is it, it looked sharp. That's all I could say. Yeah. And then I love how right before the big finale, you know, they're fighting. And I, th I know somebody else already mentioned this, but Benny the Jet's just like, he's like smiling, just like scooping up uh, drugs <laughs> into the bag. <laughs> and then he's like, "All right, I'll I'll fight you now." It's uh, yeah, the the thumbs up scene with Yun Bu before he gets knocked out, and uh, yeah, it's really really just very well executed. And I like the the diversity in the final fight too it was pretty nice. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I do agree. the The whole drugging of of Yun Hua could have could have gone, but again, like a movie with this many people, like you said. I mean, you could make this three hours and film for three years and just have it all fights, you know? So you can't, nobody's going to do that. But, uh, yeah, I really liked it. I like this one. Yeah, I think the film was kind of hurt by the running time. You know, you know, at that time, you know, most Hong Kong movies are 90 minutes. So, the, the, you know, that kind of restricted them from having longer finale. You know, they had, had the Hong Kong films been granted a two-hour running time like your typical Hollywood film, mm -hmm. I think this would have been probably the best thing that, that they, they've ever done. And uh -huh. also a quick yeah. shoot. Yeah. Also a quick shout out to Chin Ga Lo, who did a lot of the stunt doubling in this film. The shot of Jackie kicking Benny the Jet, that was Chin Ga Lo. If you go back and look at it, that's Chin Ga Lo. He's I mean, he's one of the unsung heroes of the Jackie Chan Sam Hong stunt team. Nice. I will say this though, I do kind of miss the 90 minute action film. I, I do. And I, I like, you know, I, I really like briskly paced films i'm kind of a runtime kind of guy shorter runtime kind of guy so I, I i go back to these types of films a lot because uh you know it's it's they're real they're very brisk and easy to get through you know they're not a chore copy that well Rick. now we are again i am going to read from the book of rick <laughs> the gospel of rick oh. Uh, <laughs> oh. jackie finishes project day two where he takes on a team of literally and figuratively explosive extortionists. Although not as cohesive as the previous film, the stunt team was at the height of its powers, mounting one amazing fight scene after another, fight scenes of such complexity and speed that they needed to be reviewed repeatedly to capture all the nuances. The now de rigueur end credit outtakes give witness to the price both Jackie and co-star Maggie Chung Play, paid receiving head wounds during the production. Thankfully, neither is dire as Armor of God's accident, except in Maggie's case, as she says on the documentary, split her skull and she had to go into the hospital for a week. Whoa. Meanwhile, though, this is just all a prelude to Chan's old friend Sammo Hung's professional situation was far more dire. At the same time Jackie was flying high, Hong's filmography had hit a rough, a rough patch. In addition to decreasing box office returns for his work, Sammo had gone public with his contention that his films wouldn't have failed if Jackie had agreed to appear in them. Wow. While that may have been true, 
as far as it goes, it didn't exactly endear him to his Peking Opera School Junior. Even so, Jackie was now in his mid-30s, and his internal alarm clock was ticking louder every day. The idea of a final Three Brothers film, one that would immortalize their kung fu skills at their height, was not anathema to him. You like that anathema? I love that word. That's good. good. <laughs> so deciding, they shot the works with Dragons Forever, a literally fight-filled extravaganza featuring almost every kung fu supporting player they could cram in including Dick T.Y., Philip Kyle Fay. I love Philip Kyle Fay. Whenever, right, when I was, when I, we, when we, whenever we were, there was a period of time where every week we would do a Kung Fu theater and all my friends would get together. And every time he showed up, we'd all shout in unison, Kyle Fay! And we did that a lot. Kyle Fay! <laughs> Billy Chow, Yun Hua, Jin Karlock, Fung Hak On, Lu Cha Young, and much of both Jackie's and Samo's stunt team. Curiously, each of the stars played anti-heroes. Jackie and a moral lawyer, Samo a gunrunner, Yun Biao a benignly, a benignly demented burglar, two of whom are redeemed by true love with sisters who are being persecuted by an eccentric, sadistic drug lord. As the three struggle through the plot, the, fast, the fights are fast, ample, and amazing. The trio fight each other in literally dozens of thugs, in restaurants, nightclubs, parking lots, pleasure boats, and finally in a drug factory where each does some of his most impressive work. There, Samo stages a rematch between Jackie and Benny the Jet, the villain's main cocaine taster. He plays a cocaine taster. <laughs> like a wine taster. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Excellent Whoa. vintage. No. <laughs> this one took a little longer, Iguidez explained to me. He worked for weeks on this fight. And yes, they, i.e. the action director, choreographer. Choreographer, by the way, was Corey Yun. Mm. That's mm-hmm. Right. That's why the fights are a little stronger and better in this because Samuel didn't have to do all of them themselves. And also Corey and Samuel work together a lot. Do pretty much make it up as they go along. Benny the Jet told me, yeah, all the stories you've heard about them making up as they go along, absolutely true. Cynthia <laughs> Rothoff said the same thing. <laughs> yep. Wow. The humor in this fight is more facile than in Wheels on Meals, and the brutality lessened, but they still get their kicks in, although for the first time ever, Jackie is clearly doubled by a stuntman, Chin Carlock, for the fight's penultimate kick. Benny the Jet explained to me, Jackie was on another set. Samuel worked so fast that Jackie didn't have time to be at both places at once, and we needed that shot. It would, be, it would not be the last time Samuel used stand-ins for Jackie in the midst of his frenetic fight sequences. Mm. Even in uh, Thunderbolt, that car racing one, you could again see Jen Carlock in the, uh, in the uh, casino scene, standing in for Jackie. But despite an interesting story and many terrific fight scenes, it appeared that as if the audience had not forgiven Samo or perhaps was a bit jaded by the trio. For whatever reason, Dragons Forever had a surprisingly soft box office take, even wow. in Japan, which had traditionally been a Chan stronghold. Hmm. That, wow. among other things, convinced Jackie to go his own way. I've done everything three times, he told me. So he decided to stop trying to honor Buster Keaton, Bruce Lee, Gene Kelly, and even Samo, and start trying to honor his latest screen idol, Steven Spielberg. And that's what led to Miracle, or, Lady, or Mr. Canton and Lady Rose. Now, that's from the book. But since then, I've gotten more information because the book came out, which is still available on Amazon, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever good books are, are downloaded or sold. <laughs> uh, one penny for one penny plus three nine nine shipping. <laughs> yeah, man, I still get royalties. I have still get royalties ten years later. So in any case, um, I love a movie which tells you about its production as you're watching it. You know, I, I think it was you, Frank, who was uh, uh, criticizing or complaining a little bit about the ending. That ending. To my mind, in terms of where they were in their lives and their relationship with each other, could not have been more accurate. I mean, yeah, literally, 
Wow. Poetic. So good. They literally, I mean, go their own way. It was over. This movie was more mature and more balanced. They shot the works and they really didn't care what the audience or, or the studio thought of it. Mm -hmm. it. It was, and also what was wonderful is that these books, these two movies were more than yin yang. They were antidotes to each, to each other. If you don't like Dragons Forever, you like Wheels on Meals. If you don't like Wheels on Meals, you like Dragons Forever. They, they, they salved each other. They, they were in perfect balance. They were bookends to the relationship of the three brothers. Also, I want to remind everybody about the height of Yun Biao's career. Again, went his own way. And he did movies like On the Run with, mm. Alfred, with Alfred Jung. And he did Writing Wrongs. You know, he was mm. at his height when they all went and went above their own way. And yeah. So it tells you, the whole movie tells you about the production. Samo loved this because he finally got to be a romantic lead. In Eastern Condors, he got to be thin. And he doesn't, he doesn't, have, a, he doesn't have a nickname where, where Fatso. Or right, right. Person. In this one, he gets to be a romantic lead. And yes, Jackie, gets, Jackie finally gets to play himself. <laughs> <laughs> away from the public Jackie is a fairly dark character wow. and I told you that story I think on the last episode where he came up to, to me and Jonathan Ross and the guys at the table when we were doing the documentary on him and said "Yeah, are you guys like me that whenever you go to a new country you have sex with a woman from that country that first night and we all look at him like Whoa. sure wow. but, <laughs> yes and Rick was like was yes kidding. <laughs> so yeah, this is an extraordinary movie for one reason or another, and I think I'm I think I'm done. All right, I'm ready to vote. Let's get down to it. But yeah, I love love the fight sequence at the end. Uh, I, I, I it's just still it's still even though the first movie, well, Wheels on Meals, definitely inches it out in terms of their their fight confrontation. This is still great. Like this is still. You know, one of Jackie's best. You know, this is still a great. Ooh, I love wow. that shot because that because that was a mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looked yeah. like it was. Yeah, mm. you, you can know, see you can see him push. The and, but they, oh, but again, they see? were so they were so pressed for time. They just said, "Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it." Oh, and yeah. oh wow! Not, and yeah, you, I'm could... not going to take another kick from this guy. <laughs> <laughs> plus, plus, you could see him push off on that fall with his other foot. To get there, but Man. That, then they had that second yeah. shot of all the of all the drug bricks coming down yeah. from <laughs> right. from jet from Jackie's group. Copy that. All right, let's get ready to vote. I, I kind of have a feeling. I have an inkling of what it might be. <laughs> what it <laughs> might <laughs> be. Can we just vote uh, for the rail slide? <laughs> yeah. Hey, anybody, it's listen, your preference. If you don't want to vote, you don't have to because it doesn't matter which wins because they're both great. That's true. That's true. No, we burn oh. one forever. Yeah, Whenever it loses, it's, uh, <laughs> we have that power. <laughs> All right, so before we uh, get down to it, this is what the internet voted for. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh. Yeah. Look at that. That's amazing. I like the yeah. internet. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. Kyle, Dragons Eric. Forever or Wheels on Meals? <laughs> okay, for, first off to FJ, what would you say? Uh, would you say that to make the what's called the fight scene in Dragons Forever much more on top? Does it need a heart rip Kalima style in it? <laughs> <laughs> it's just every episode. Kalima heart rip. Kalima. You know, you know, you know, you know. This guy. <laughs> Sorry. Hold numbers, boy. Hold numbers, boy. All right, Kyle, vote. No. All right. So, Wheels on Meals is. Definitely like has that out there moment, but Giants Forever is much more solid, and I I love it more because it's so simple and very tight knit. Giants Forever for me. All right, Frank. 
Yeah, at first, I, like I told Rick earlier, I said, you know, I, I don't think I can choose between Wheels on Wheels and Dragons Forever. I enjoy them both because I remember the good time that I had watching Wheels on Wheels and Furious. But then, you know, I thought about it a little bit more and I thought, you know, Dragons Forever was different. You know, uh, it, it showed them it was much more interesting, much more fascinating. And, you know, you have uh, much better actors. You have Danny Yib, you know, you have, um, you know, Leroy Chow, like we mentioned. And then the fights are just consistently good. You know, topping up with his great finale. Again, I didn't like the fact that they just ended like that. And with Yunbi just saying, you know, you guys just prefer women over pals. I, you know, I was just hoping for a much more rounded ending, I guess. But it is what it is, you know. And uh, and I just only wish that I had known Pauline Young personally. <laughs> I, wish you did. I wish you did too. She's really good. I, I, oh my God. I wish I wish you went to high school uh, uh, with her. I, I wish, yeah, I wish I would. Well, I wish I would have known her back in college. You know, and, uh, Vivian. Yeah. Vivian, Frank has something to tell you. She's in, she's in the next room. <laughs> so anyway, but, yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, this is still, you know, this is like their, you know, this is them at the top of the games in terms of both comedy fights and and just like com camaraderie. So my vote goes to Dragons Forever. Whoa! All right, hey, hey ho! All right, FJ, who you got? Uh, I really, I really thought I was going to be the only one to choose Dragons Forever. So I'm, uh, oh. I'm actually, you know, I, I, I thought long and hard about it. It's a better movie overall. So, and the emotional core of it is really, I think, what wins it over for me. Um, and and Rick was sort of t talking about. The, this a little bit before but it, it really is when you take the two movies they're literal snapshots in time of you know maybe project a ties into that too is sort of like the the young men to to you know like the cycle of that those three and their relationship and so i think dragons especially hearing about the ending which i never really thought of till this it, it only solidifies the emotional resonance it has with me versus is Wheels on Meals, which is just a popcorn good time. And to Rick's point, it's a win-win either way, but I, I, I gotta go with my heart and that's Dragons Forever. Nice. Alright. Will? So, I'll, I mean, I'll preface my vote by saying, and this will probably give away which one I'm voting for, but there are a few things in the world that I like more than silliness and stupidity. And Wheels on Meals is just like the perfect, it's just like perfect stupidity to me. It's so dumb. But it, on purpose, and it's so funny because it's so deliberately dumb, and they know it's dumb, and they love that it's dumb. So I, I, I brought it out my old DVD too. <laughs> I have five copies of this movie. Uh, <laughs> that uh, has I, my sub. That's only you know, that one has my subtitles. Does it really? Yeah, that one has my new subtitles. You can keep uh, it. You can keep it. Now. You can so, keep it. I <laughs> autograph it. That, I'll autograph it for you next time I see you. Well, <laughs> yes. well right, actually, so. so here, check this out. Maybe this is overkill, but I actually have, I have two copies of the same version. <laughs> <laughs> I had that one. Um, it looks familiar. Uh, I might have so, it Yeah, so I got to go with Wheels on Meals. All right. I just love it We're so much. You know why you chose Wheels. You know why. <laughs> That's Soul Glow, son. <laughs> Soul Glow. The Jared right. Curl did it. Hey. Mm -hmm. Master Chaos. Um, well, I, FJ, I, I, I'm with you, man. Like I said at the beginning, I felt like I was the least qualified. I, you know, I, I, I honestly thought everybody was going to go with Wheels on Meals. Uh, but my vote is Gamera the Brave. I think it's the best, <laughs> uh, best Jackie Chan film ever made. Uh, no, uh, Dragons. It's, it, it's just solid on so many levels. I mean, everything works. I like the comedy in this one. I, I, like, I like that they actually have a story where they all feel – a part of the plot and, and they move the story forward and, and there's fights throughout. And I, I think that the third act is just bonkers. It's a good damn movie. And by the way, this is one of the best uh, fucking live panels ever. Everybody has been so polite. It's been so, so peaceful and so amazing. And what a <laughs> loving experience this is. So uh, uh, anyway, dragons are forever. That's my vote. All right. <laughs> Gamma the brave. <laughs> Alex. So, uh, yeah, that poll is very interesting where everyone is going for Wheels on Meals. But, hey, they were wrong about Yip Man and Prodigal Son also. So what do you <laughs> say about Yip Man? Um, 
<laughs> yeah, definitely Dragons Forever. I think Wheels on Meals gets a lot of cred for the one fight scene with Benny the Jet, whereas on the whole, Dragons Forever is just much, much better. By the way, not like Benny the Jet needs to be propped up as a badass. Everyone knows his record is over 60 fights, undefeated. But if you never heard the story about how he was in Hong Kong in 1981 and he got challenged during a TV show by Kung Fu Tak, who's a famous kickboxer in Hong Kong, and they were like, yeah, he doesn't think you're a real fighter, and he challenged him there, and they're like, yeah, uh, you got to fight him. He's like, sure, in two weeks, no problem. No, tomorrow. And Benny was not in camp. He was out of shape. He was, I mean, Kung Fu Tak was lean, ready to go. And Benny beat the living not <laughs> at a Kung Fu talk and the videos on YouTube and what more of a badass. He's like got a muffin top. He's not even in shape. <laughs> he beat the hell out of Kung Fu Tak, who's still very famous. He has gyms all over Hong Kong. Yeah. Uh, a very famous Muay Thai instructor. So, um, yeah, there's the Benny Jet thing. But come on. Dragons Forever is a way better movie on the whole. Come on. All right. All right. Eric. If you would have asked me last week. I would have said Wheels on Meals. You're asking me tonight after a recent rewatch. If you want, if, if we're judging on the first 80 minutes, I say Dragons Forever. But that final fight in Wheels on Meals, after I'm done watching it, I'm just like, man. Like, like it, it gives me a different, a little bit of a different sensation after the film is actually over. I'm going with Wheels on Meals, man. All right. Look at that. Wow, All right. Okay. Mixing it up. So well, that's three, three. That's uh, that's two for wheels, right? I feel good for Will. I feel better for Will now. I was worried. <laughs> <laughs> not only Will, but, uh... I know. It's All not right, just Rick. me and my outdated copies of Wheels on Meals in the corner. <laughs> oh, giveaways, channel giveaways. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, Sign, I would be, Frank. I would be remiss. I have a great affection and fondness for Wheels on Meals because Wheels on Meals gave me the title. For the Jackie Chan comic book that I uh, oh. told because oh. the Japanese uh, it's the Japanese title right Japanese Martin title yeah. Martin Max. so that's so which is I'm better than calling it Cyclone Z which is the <laughs> Japanese title oh, yeah. Dragon uh, Dragons Dale. Forever I was yeah. tempted but you know basically uh, the comic book came about because I was confused by the title Spartan X I'm saying what does that even mean let me give it a meaning and then also I wanted to finish out the plot of Armor of God, and I call this the Arsenal of Heaven. Spartan X, the Arsenal of Heaven. But in any case, I think that That's this is available. It's so good. Well, it's, ne it's never it's been finished. It's a six-issue thing that only got four issues out. Oh. But, but I may sell the uh, last two scripts. I still have them. But in any case, neither here nor there. As much as I enjoyed the movie, four years later, I had grown with Jackie, I had grown with Samuel. I had, I had met them all. I had met Benny and talked to him several times. Uh, yeah, uh, Dragons Forever was their swan song. Was knowingly their, was knowingly the end of their of their on screen relationship. It was their headstone, and as such, that's where I go to lay flowers. Mm. And um, and it is a superior. It's more mature. Yes. Meals on Meals is a great fight, as a classic fight. But in terms of a story of those three men, it's Dragons Forever. That's it. All right. And you, you guys know who I'm voting for, so let's go ahead and get it. The winner of today's versus is... That's the awesome. music, yeah. that heavy metal music gets me so amped. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. That's what you get here on the channel, yeah. baby. Yunhua right. is so nice. They use him on the cover twice. <laughs> <laughs> the legend. Yeah. The legend. Yeah, that's it. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, man. Well, this was so much fun having all these badass, excuse me, great asses. There you go. Yeah. And legend here. Stop, you know. That's right. <laughs> FJ. Thank you, sir, yeah. for coming by. And now oh, that you're here, you. you as now that you and Will are here, like we say to all our new guests, make this your second home. You guys can come back at any time you want. Uh, it, you know, join the family. That's right. Join Thank the family. You. That's right. Let's, Let's, definitely. Definitely. Let's do yeah. Armor God versus the second one. Oh, well, we shall talk. Condor. Let's do Operation Condor versus Armor God. Ooh, interesting. I'm in. <laughs> 
Ooh, we shall t we shall speak if after. We shall speak. Uh, but we everybody's continue. information, everyone's YouTube channels, Rick Myers podcasts, uh, the Eureka website. <laughs> All that information is in the description uh, box below of this video. So make sure you subscribe to all these badasses. So support. That's right. Watch the Transformers. That's right. War for Cybertron with Optimus Prime and Megatron. Make sure you guys watch that. Support some FJ. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. You know we're going to be doing this every, every week. We're going to try. We're going to try to do it every week. Uh, but we're on a roll. And I would like to thank all you badasses for watching, liking, sharing the video, having fun, hanging out with us, knuckleheads, as we talk movies, because that's what we love to do. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, don't forget, quick segue tomorrow, just like last week, we go from kung fu to horror. Tomorrow's guest at 6 p.m. Pacific time, we will have, hold on, trying to find it. Sorry about the delay there. We will have David. That's right, Art the Clown himself from Terrifier. Nice. David Howard Thornton will be hanging out with the Movie Dojo Army, talking horror films, and we're going to have a good time tomorrow. 6 p.m. Pacific time, make sure you guys join us. All right, and uh, anything else, Rick? Any out, any any uh, words to uh, send us off? Uh, no, just a, another another book of mine came out, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, nice. It's on Amazon. I love it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's fine. But this is this is available now. My old book is not a, as, as much as I love it. Yes, I I do the same thing. That's the book that I have my autograph and the address of Yun Biao in. Oh, there you oh, go. Fine. FJ, is that vintage? Is that vintage, Rick? This is vintage, autographed by Rick Myers in 1991. Ooh, wow. Wow. Okay, I bought nice. this book. I was 12 years old, and it said in the back. <laughs> It said in the back, no, 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 I'm not joking. It said in the back that the author welcomes letters or somewhere and had a yeah. P.O. box. And yeah. I wrote to that P.O. box, and that's how we became friends. And that led me into all this. And that's just us. for the record, that's he called great. me Chan Fan number one. In the <laughs> oh, wow. There you go. There you there go. go. He showed up. So FJ showed up at the screening of Police Story. In New York, for the New York Asia, um, in the New York Film Festival with Jackie in attendance, he showed up dressed as the character. Dressed oh, up. Oh, this, I'll, I'll send you guys the picture. It's the, it's yeah. We're wearing the same <laughs> outfit. Yeah. No, no, I wasn't dressed oh, wow. as the character. He'd been on TV that morning, and I put the same outfit on. That's and then right. yeah, I'll, I'll tell that story the next time. But yeah. All right. Oh, we got we got to see those we got to see those photos. This was a lot of fun, guys. Make sure you subscribe to all these guys. Follow Rick's podcast. Buy everything Eureka. Buy it all. That's right. And we shall <laughs> see you back. Uh, yeah, that's right. That 88, 88 films. Yeah. Shout 88. out to eighty eight yeah. films. That's right. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you alive. badasses tomorrow. Really quick for a fun thumbnail. Fight pose. Go. Yeah, like it, like it. All right. All right. See you badasses <laughs> tomorrow. Take care, guys. Bye. <laughs>